Um, so hi everyone, my name is Gabrielle Fayant. I'm originally from Alberta. My family comes from one of the eight land-based Métis settlements called Fishing Lake Métis Settlement. I'm a guest here on traditional unceded, unsurrendered Algonquin territory, uh, which is now called Ottawa. Um, and so thanks for having me today. So indigenous communities are still targeted and affected by systemic racism in Canada today, uh, largely because of how Canada was formed. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the institutions and systems that kind of operate within Canada were often designed without indigenous peoples and even at the hands of oppression of a lot of indigenous folks. Um, so it's really important that Canadians really understand the history of the land that they live on. How were all of these buildings made on this land? How were all of these farms put on this territory? Um, and you know, the history of Canada is really only 150 years old. And if you look at the history of the world, that's actually very, very young. Um, and so what was happening before 150 years ago? What did this land look like? Who lived here? Um, and how, how are these lands governed? And what happened in order to remove indigenous peoples from these territories? A really big cliche and actually um, misunderstanding about what happened in Canada and, and what we, many of us call Turtle Island, is that Indigenous communities gave up the land or that the land was won in some kind of war um, or the land was, was bought. Um, and so none of these are actually true. Um, so if you, if you look at the history of Canada, um, there was never a war between Indigenous folks and uh, European settlers. It was actually Indigenous folks that fought with European settlers um, to fight back against um, either the British or the French, or they also helped fight back against the Americans. Um, so it's really thanks to Indigenous warriors and soldiers that took their alliances with European settlers very seriously, or else we'd actually be living in America right now. Um, and so, you know, it's really hurtful that most Canadians don't actually know the history of this country. They don't actually know the history of the land that they're occupying. And this ignorance and lack of knowledge really, really impacts a lot of us. Um, and it, it really enables the systemic racism and the systemic abuse that Indigenous communities face. I think that Canadians can be respectful of Indigenous communities and cultures by really understanding the privileges that they carry. Um, so the way I see privilege and oppression is that they're on a spectrum. So if you have privilege, it often means that there's someone that is being oppressed. And so when you understand your privileges, you can, you can give back to communities that are being oppressed. Um, and so examples of privileges that exist in Canadian society are, um, are white privilege, are class privileges, um, gender privileges, sexuality privileges, religion pr privileges, and you know, the list goes on and on. And so we just have to be really aware of these things. And I think, I don't think that we can be respectful of other cultures unless we really understand our privileges. And then maybe we will be accepted to learn more about another person's culture. Um, but I think that's the first step 
is really understanding our privileges and and also just learning the history the the true and factual history of the the lands that we occupy Um, so the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls and two-spirit folks, um, I, I call it a crisis um, because I, I believe that it's, you know, just our, our relatives are, are being harmed at alarming rates. And again, this is connected to systemic racism. Um, so myself, I personally have two family members that were murdered um, in the last probably 30 years. And uh, I know several others in the community here in Ottawa um, that have gone missing or have been murdered um, and their friends and their chosen family. And, you know, it's, it's not a coincidence that almost every Indigenous person I know has a story like this. Um, and so be, this is connected to systemic racism because a lot of the time when ind an Indigenous person goes missing um, or their concerns for their well-being or their safety, a lot of the time um, either RCMP or police really don't pay attention to it. Um, and so our cases are not looked into until probably weeks later. And by that time, you know, there's, there's TV shows, the, for, the 48 hours. You know, we know that after 48 hours, you know, the, the amount of time we have to find folks safely and find evidence um, is really limited. You know, and this is experiences from Indigenous folks across Canada. Um, it's, it's so problematic. I think a lot of people really don't, like, we really underestimate how closely this crisis is connected to how we treat the land. So if you look at places like Fort McMurray or other places in um, areas where there's a lot of resource extraction, where there's a lot of man camps. That's actually where you see the most women, girls, and two-spirit folks going missing. And, and again, it's not a coincidence. You know, these men camps are very dangerous. And the way that we feel, or the way that these men camps feel like they can just extract from the land, from Mother Earth, without any consequences is how these men also feel about our women. Um, so it's a huge crisis and, and I really encourage more and more people to examine it and look into it um, from indigenous perspectives. Mm -hmm.